back. I thought you were cuddling with Sophie. Sophie hates him. I know. Everybody does. <laughs> I like him. Although, did I tell you when it went to the Razor Clam Festival? And, um, get out of here. Um, this guy, like, yelled out his window. We were crossing the intersection, and he yelled out the window. He's like, uh, he's like, that's the best looking dog on the peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute but Aww. stanley was very popular we were um we were actually mm. very social i talked to a bunch of like locals and stuff oh, good. like older like older people yeah. and it was they had like a zz zz top cover band um which was kind of terrible but fun at the same time just like some you know kind of older you know older dad types doing yeah. like rocking out to um zz top i love dad types. yeah and then they had like a giant slide i went down on and um got my pictures taken with the giant razor clam which surprisingly i didn't freak out because usually those costumed things like really wig me out really but he's so smiley like yeah that particular razor clam had just like a giant smile on his face and it wasn't creepy to me but the ones that like interact with me at disneyland and stuff i don't like it oh my god i have a story to tell you about that yeah oh yeah I, isn't it on the old list yeah yeah do i feel like you've been telling that story do i remember it i don't know i think i do let's just say hi yeah let's start by saying hi yeah hi hi hello hello hi welcome to the worst day of my life uh, my name is Cherish. And I'm Megan. And that's Kenny. Yeah. Trying Hi. to interrupt okay. our process. <laughs> Hi, Internet World. Goodbye. <laughs> you Wait, can come back. Come back. What do you need, babe? Oh, I was going to say if you guys want to be to start the French bread pizza if you were hungry. Oh, nope. No? Okay. We always eat on the way so that you guys don't have to feed us. And then you guys are always so sweet. And you're like, oh, we want to feed you. And then I always feel bad because then we don't want to eat anything. But that's okay. Sorry. I know. Rockefeller oysters later. Well, I don't think Chair Bear. Well, will you you eat a cooked oyster or a, a, a bar barbecued with cheese and sauce and onions and garlic? <laughs> I would taste it. I would try it. Even people that don't like oysters like oysters Rockefeller. Yeah. 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 As long as it's not a raw booger, you know, it's, um... <laughs> as long as it's not poopy in the mouth, I'll eat it. No. Well, yeah, raw oysters are so gross. Well, the funny thing about the raw oysters that we got are from this person that, like, I, um, had jealous fits uh, of rage yeah, I, of... I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He's gonna peace out. No, it was this, this girl on the internet that, um, he used to work with that, like, everything he ever says, like, if he says something on his... or if he posts something... She always responds, Ugh. and she's always like, kind of. It's always like a, kind of like a flirtatious manner. I feel like, yeah. And her profile pictures are always like, you know, her, like, just w way filtered out for one thing. She's very attractive in real life because I met her. How big but are her boobs? Big. Well, not bigger than mine. Okay. I guess not huge, but they're okay. always like up and out in her yeah. photos. Mm -hmm. And then so anyway, but I was like getting really annoyed because. <clears throat> This has been going on for since the beginning of our relationship. Yeah. And one time we stayed over at his friend's house in Portland, and I woke up to his phone making, like, a noise or whatever. And I, like, glance over at it because it gives you, like, the preview of, um, like, text message or whatever mm -hmm. on the screen. And it was, like, um, that person's name text messaging him at, like, 8 a.m. And I'm, like, why is she text messaging him at 8 a.m.? So I was like, what the hell? And then I asked him about it. I was like, why? <clears throat> like, what's up with this chick? And then he said, well, actually, it's kind of funny that you say that because, like, her boyfriend got really mad at her because she's always texting me. And um, I was like, that does not make me feel better at all. Uh -huh. um, that her, even her boyfriend's having a problem with her, you know, always yeah. contacting Kenny or whatever. So long story short, this is going on for a really long time. And I think I even told his mom about it, how she like really annoys me. Cause you know, immediately like he posts something and she's like the first one to, yeah. you know, comment she's or waiting for it. Yeah. And it's always something funny or clever anyway. <clears throat> so like she was really irritating me and I knew where she was working, um, which is this restaurant over by Kenny's mom's house. Uh huh. And he, we were talking about. Oh, going she's there. local. Yeah, and okay. he, we were talking about going there. I was like, I don't want to go there. That dumb, so and so. Right. And um, 
I was like, you know, I'm not, I try not to be like a jealous person, but this person just really like gets under my skin. And, um, and then he was like, oh, she doesn't work there anymore. So we go to the Razor Clan Festival and then she's there. And now she works at my favorite place on this entire peninsula, which is the Oysterville, like, sea farm or whatever that's out in Oysterville. Like, yeah. where I love to go sit out there uh -huh. on the deck and eat oysters and, like, Look have a water. glass of wine. Oh. And now she annoyingly works there. And so, but Whoa. they had a booth at the, the Razor Clam Festival. And then she, Kenny introduced me to her. Um, mm -hmm. And then she got super excited and then went and gave us an entire bag of free That's oysters. That's insane. Good. Maybe you guys will be friends. You obviously have the same taste in men. <laughs> yeah. You both obviously love oysters. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, go there. I know. Um, but she does have a giant, um, like, bull mastiff. Cute. And she was trying to set up like a giant dog play date um, on the peninsula Cute. for like specifically like larger breed, you know, type dogs. Because it's like, um, you know, like with smaller dogs playing with big dogs, sometimes like, you know, something bad can get happen. They can get trampled or Stanley will trample them or, or pick them up by the neck and shake them like a rag doll. Right. That's what I'm afraid he would do because I've seen <sighs> him like try to get crazy about some kind of he did fine with the wiener. Mm -hmm. Um, or Murph. Ugh, I miss Wiener. I know. I do too. That that so came cute. up on my like memories from oh. a year ago. It was Stanley sitting on the bed with a tiny Wiener. Yeah, he's so cute. Um, but yeah, but other sometimes it's it just kind of depends on the dog. Like if something annoys him about them, like I can tell. Like he gets really pissed off and annoyed about Carlito, um, Kenny's yeah. dog that lives with the mom now, because uh, like. Carlito's just always barking, growling, trying to attack Stanley. Yeah. And when we've taken them both out on the beach, Stanley will, like, start circling him. Like, he's, like, like he's, like, starts running around him in circles. Like, he's going to attack him. Like bullies riding bicycles around a kid <laughs> in, like, an 80s movie? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. And Intimidating so, him. Right. So we have to, like, make sure that he doesn't. Because I could totally see him just. He's grabbed other dogs by their like harness if they have a harness like um i think he's oh done it to God. morty and started just like shaking him violently <gasps> oh. I, was, I mean it's not funny i sound like i'm <laughs> laughing about it i mean he was okay but yeah just i mean it's it's like when they pick up a stuffed animal and right. just like start you know <laughs> yeah just shaking the shit out of it but anyway they're trying to break it it's little neck mm -hmm. that's like instinct instinctively what they're trying to do right so so yeah Yikes. anyways long story short or longer um, dog park with big, large dog breed dogs would be fun. So, but it would require me to, yes, probably become friends with that person. You know, it, maybe it would be good for you. Yeah, to maybe. learn a thing or two until she like wants to have some like weird threesome with my boyfriend. <laughs> well, then you just break up the friendship, and then you have to find a new place to get oysters. <laughs> yeah. But for now, enjoy the ho oyster hookup. Right. Embrace the oyster hookup. I know. Be friends with her just for the oyster <laughs> hookup. Yeah. <laughs> just um, to use her. Yes. Uh, and Why secretly not? despise her, but just yeah. take all the oysters that I can get and hoard uh -huh. them in my little um, uh -huh. apartment. Uh huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Refrigerator. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, but enough about that. I did, um, I did, Kenny surprised me with, um, a box of adult candies. Oh my God, I thought you were going to say something so much grosser. Okay. No, we've been doing some crazy karaoke stuff. I'm staying up way too late. Yeah. But what's going on with you? What's, um, what's up when you're end of the world? Um... My boobs hurt so oh. bad. I cannot believe it. Like, I'm... I feel like I'm pretty tough when uh -huh. it comes to pain. I'm a chronic pain sufferer. I yeah. deal with pain all day, every day of my life. Mm -hmm. I just push through it. No big deal. Yeah. It is, like, making me nauseous. Uh-oh. It hurts so bad. Like, it's fine uh. if nothing is... Touching them. Yeah. But if anything, like, grazes them, even my shirt, my arm, my oh, yeah. bra, anything, it's, like, it makes me <sighs> sick to my stomach. I'm 
stopping breastfeeding. That's why. Yeah. I should have said that probably. But it's just the process of it like drying up or whatever. And I don't yeah. know if it's because I did it for so long this time or what, but it's, I don't remember it hurting at all with mm. Sophie. And this is like bad. Well, you know. can you make Patrick um, nurse you or whatever <laughs> like, occasionally so that you're like, what, slowly? Well, he did do that for me, actually. Yeah. Um, That's once. what I would try to make he somebody do. relieved some pressure for me, <laughs> and it was very helpful at the time. But like I said, I think where I am now in the process of drying up, it's just going to be painful. So what were you going to say about 420? Oh, no, just that... <clears throat> like we were we celebrated it and <laughs> Shannon was like when I went to work I was like yeah I was like I'm really tired you know uh Kenny and I celebrated 420 really hard and she's like oh my gosh she's like you're those guys John and I were just talking about that last night I'm like <laughs> we we're I was like making fun of people they're like like Oh yeah, man! Like, go celebrate 420, dude, mm -hmm. and like taking it to the next level. Because I told her about how we did karaoke, and I wanted to perform all of the songs on Dr. Dre the Chronic uh -huh. from like my 13 year old um, childhood memories. Uh -huh. And then we did this other one, which I had never heard before, but it was like, "Let's go smoke some pot, boo boo boo." Let's go smoke some pot now, oh, now, now. Perfect. Let's go smoke. Yeah, it's like to the same melody is that one song like let's go to the hop uh -huh. anyway so we did that when we I um kind of like <laughs> I didn't really like deliberately guilt him into it but um I was really anxious like it seems like if because we ate half of a uh, like caramel edible the one and like I don't know I get so cracked out like super really? cracked out. Like I like I want to run a marathon. On I like half I can't. of one. Yes, I, I ate was... five of those. Shut up! And felt nothing. That's so weird. What is wrong with me? I don't know, but probably Kenny... my messed up stomach. Yeah, Oops. Kenny kept being like, "What?" He's like, "You know, you're really tense." Like I, you know, I just want to chill and like watch Cheech and Chow. I'm like, "What's going on? You're so tense." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm tense." And he was like, "Well, what?" He's like, "What helps you when you're feeling like that?" And I was like, "Well, going for a walk." But it was like midnight. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I was like, and looked outside because the weather's been kind of like up and down lately. So I was like, "Well, you know, it's it's pretty cold out there." I was like, "Ah," uh, and he's like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "I don't really want to go on a walk right now." And and then um, I proceeded to, to, like, just start cleaning, like, feverishly. Yeah. Like, I started, like, insanely. Like, I was, like, bleaching everything and just, like, wiping it down. Yeah. And suddenly all this stuff was, like, the clutter was, like, driving me insane. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, like, he's like, babe, he's like, you know, just relax. He's like, you've been cleaning a lot lately. Like, just, you know, just chill out. And I was like, I can't! <laughs> like, I'm freaking out! And, and he's like, and then all of a sudden he starts putting his shoes on putting his like rain jacket on and I was like what are you doing and he's like we're going for a walk yeah you need to chill so, the fuck out so we did we walked it was so much and it always happens that way too like he, he's not really into it mm -hmm. and I'm kind of like reluctant about it too but I have that much energy where I'm like I have to do something to burn it yeah and so but it always ends up being so much fun like we walked yeah. down to the port or the yeah the port of, of Ilwaco yeah and just looked at boats like there's a particular bench that we've We've done this a couple of times. Aww. I've been um, freaking out. But there's a really nice, like, bench right there, and it's just peaceful, and we can let Stanley run like a maniac because there's, like, everything shuts down around here, like, 7 p.m. Right. at night. <laughs> so weird. But it's kind of nice if you're, like, a night owl or somebody that wants to, you know... Roam the streets drunk yeah, by yourself. Yeah, and not worrying about... Um, and also... I think police go to sleep here early <laughs> too. Like, um, they don't, I don't. Hey, at least you have police, okay? <laughs> yeah, I see them on very rare occasions, so I don't know what they're doing. I was uh, telling Patrick about our podcast. And I was telling him, I was Your like. Your stepdad, Patrick? Yeah, I was okay. telling him it was really terrible. And we talk about, like, really, you know, like. Um, sometimes things that are like embarrassing, but also like lady embarrassing type things. Like, so I was like, don't go like listening to it. Yes, please. <laughs> um, but he was excited that we were doing it. And I was like, yeah, we talk a lot about like, um, 
like diarrhea and he's like oh i already knew that he's right. like um he's like i remember he's like you shit your pants one time when you were with me <laughs> <laughs> so but i was like i told him i was like i definitely don't want my mom um listening to the podcast Ever. Uh, and i was like so please don't tell my mom about the podcast because i have purposefully like not yes or even my brother because i know that my brother will tell my mom because they have right. that kind of weird tight relationship. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. It's like, so after I saw that my, my dad had started following us on uh -huh. Instagram, mm -hmm. I was like, Oh no, he specifically told my family, you know, yeah. I love you guys. I know you just want to support me and things, mm -hmm. but like, just stay out of this one. You don't want any part of it. Uh, <laughs> but he got, I, like, we were talking about the podcast and I was like, dad, have you listened to it? Uh-huh. And he, like, turned and looked at me with, like, kind of a, like, goofy look on his face. And he goes, I tried to listen to one episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> he turned it off. <laughs> That's amazing, though. I love that he tried to listen to one. I said, Dad, it's not for you. He goes, I know, I know. <laughs> you tried to tell him. I know. <laughs> so you warned him. Yeah. And that's how I feel about it, too. Like, if, if somebody in my family happens upon um, the podcast, like, I don't necessarily mind my brother, but he would probably be mortified if he knew that I told, like, um, the story of the vibrator. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. I don't know, certain things. I um, But he did throw me under the bus that one time when he was like 14 and went to do the comedy night. And he like, yeah, it was really embarrassing. What happened? Well, so my brother's always been very like determined. Like if he's going to, if he gets his mind set on something, he will make it happen. Like he's like a manifestation guy. Yeah. So he was like. I don't know, like 13 or 14, and he got really into comedy. Like, he, that was his thing. Like, he wanted to be a comedian really bad. Oh, wow. And so he kept calling this place in Tucson called Laughs Comedy Club, which was, like, 21 and over nightclub, you know, where, like, they don't let underage people in. But he kept, like, harassing them pretty much. It's just, like, kept calling them over and over again, just, like, begging them to let him do comedy. And they finally gave in and wow. let him do comedy. Hell yeah. And so, of course, like, we invite everybody we know. Like, we're, my mom and I, we were, like, really excited about it. And we invite all these people to try to get, like, a full house. Yeah. You know? So it's a big deal. Yeah. That they made this one exception for my brother. And then he goes up and his whole, like, stand-up routine was just dissing, like, my mom and I, like, really embarrassingly and, like, just, it was hilarious, but it was just, like, mortifying at the same time because there's just, like, stuff, I was, like, sitting there, like, kind of things he said? just, like, stuff that was going on at that time and how pretty much, like, crazy my mom and I were, like, different things was happening, like, embarrassing stories. I don't remember the total subject matter. He probably does. I just remember, like, sitting there and just, like, kind of, like, just, like... <laughs> Like, I was, at first, I was like, whoa, Shane! And then, yeah. like, you know, and then all of a sudden, it's like, okay. and then my sister, like, you know, she's always, you know, blah, 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 doing this. She's shit. always shitting her like, pants. Yeah, shitting her pants. And, like, my mom's always like, I'm going to fucking kill you, Shane. <laughs> like, the time that my mom, um, like, did, it, I, <laughs> I think it was, like, Mother's Day. And my brother was trying to, like, really do nice deeds for my mom um, of like on that particular day, he decided he's like that he was going to pump the gas for her. Mm -hmm. So she like goes in to pay or whatever. He's like, mom, I'll pump the gas for you. Well, he didn't take the gas pump out and put it back. And so my mom just like just starts driving off. <gasps> and she's that person that like ripped the, <gasps> Uh, oh no! Like the whole gas line thing yeah. or whatever. They have to shut everything down. Oh, shit. And she, is like freaking out on him. Uh, I'm gonna fucking kill you, Shay. He's <laughs> like in the convenience store or whatever, oh, and no. and like she. And then the time that he thought he was having a heart attack, and he was just having like really bad anxiety, and he insisted at like 3 a.m. that he was like needed to go to the emergency room because he like really truly believed because he has hypochondria. Yeah, that he was having a heart attack, and I don't remember how old he was. I think he was like 16. 
And my mom was like really mad because she knew she was, he was just having an anxiety attack. And she's like, you know, uh, didn't want to go sit in the hospital for like eight hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and they like ran all these tests and they were like, are you sure? You know, because my brother's pretty like, you know, at the time, like very, very thin. Yeah. So like thought he had maybe like a cocaine problem and they were like oh. testing him for drugs Jeez. and like doing all this stuff. And then it ends up like after all of this, he drank a shot of espresso and <gasps> It just like the caffeine like caused him to have like an a really bad anxiety attack. Oh no! Because I remember my mom was yelling at him before she took him to the hospital. You know, she's like, you know, you're, you're just having an, you know anxiety attack, whatever. But he was like, uh, I don't know. She was like, if you're not if you're not dying, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Because <gasps> <laughs> she was so mad to take him to the hospital. And, of course, it was, like, ends up just being, like, you know, oh, he wasn't you're very sick. Yeah, because he never drank caffeine before, so he had, like, a shot of espresso and just, like, totally freaked out. Oh and then God. went into, like, hypochondria, thinking right. he was truly having a heart attack. Oh, my God. Because as he would, he would convince himself, he was, he thought, one time he thought he had AIDS from a toilet, like, oh. toilet seat. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was super freaked out. Thoroughly convinced he had AIDS. I forget how old he was. I think he was like eight or something. Oh my god. Um, he thought he had like all these like hardcore STDs um, before he even was sexually active or what? even had touched another human being in that what? way because he was, <laughs> he made my mom take him to the doctor because he thought he had some kind of like chlamydia or something. And she would knew he was not having chlamydia. But I guess, like, it was really awkward because they were, like, sitting in the, doc- the doctor's office and the doctor is, like, asking him, like, different things. And he basically, like, admits that he was, like, masturbating a lot with, like, um, like shampoo or something. And it was going up into his urethra. <gasps> and, like, he's, like, you know, and the doctor's, like, how, you know, frequently are you, you know, like, <laughs> masturbating in, like, a day of mom is, like, sitting there and he's, like... <gasps> I don't know, it was, like, some large number, and she was just, like, kind of more... Why did they ask her to leave the room? I don't know. I don't know. But also, my brother always thought he was just dying. He always thought he had something terrible. terrible. Oh, yeah, no. and we was always, like, trying to convince him, like, no, you know, that's not what's going on. He's way more mellow now, but when he was, like, a, like especially a teenager... Oh, my God. And he also, that was the other thing, was he always thought, my mom brought this up the other day, that um, my mom, because she would yell at him, you know, I'm going to fucking kill you. And so he really thought that she wanted to kill him. So he started taking anything that she could possibly poison, like up into, like he had at the time, like he slept up in a loft. Yeah. Like above my mom. And he would take his toothbrush up to bed with him and, like, anything she could contaminate or poison him with, he would, like, try, he would, like, Keep squirrel it. away <gasps> in his loft, um, which is kind of funny because we talked about it later as an adult because I was like, oh, that's so funny. I was like, I bet it's because mom always used to tell us she was going to kill us, um, <gasps> that we thought she was really, because I used to think she was going to come and put um, a hairdryer into the bathtub when I was taking a, I was, like, scared to take a bath. Holy shit, Megan! <laughs> Because I thought she was going to come and throw a hairdryer in, like, plugged into the wall. That is so <laughs> fucked up. Well, I mean, that's... It's, oh. it's, I mean, that's... I mean, yeah. I, she's a lot, you know, yeah. different now. But is I, she... I mean, some people... Like, I love my mother, but some people really just should not have children. Yeah. You know? like if, you sh- Your children should never feel that way. Right. About you. Yeah. You should be safe, warm, happy, home. Yeah. No, not thinking that you're going to, like, get, like, poisoned oh or... Oh, God. <laughs> it's so funny, though. Now, like, in hindsight, like, at the time, it was not funny at all. But no. it was, like, just my brother and I being able to have that conversation where we were both, like, reali- realizing that we thought that, like, our mom wanted to really, truly kill us. It's horrifying. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. It's, I'm... Um, uh, in a different place in my life now yeah. where I can look back and kind of laugh. I mean, it was terrifying at the time. Um, it's just like that, that's why I think I have such bad insomnia is because they, I read somewhere, heard somebody say that, um, people usually have insomnia is because like at some point, like in their like childhood or something, they became like, they associated sleeping with being unsafe. Cause that was like when bad things would happen. Yeah. 
Oh like, my god! And then I remembered like uh, one night the police, like my dad was like doing like domestic violence towards my mom, and the police came and they grabbed me from my bed, like I was like sleeping or whatever, and like grabbed me from my bed and like had to pull me out of the house, like take me out of the house. Oh my god! Yeah, I think we were like probably like four or something, but oh. just like being like terrified. Oh! And so like now it's like it's like you associate sleep or I associate sleep, sleep with like something like unknown, you know, like something like gonna, you know, something's gonna happen that you aren't expecting at all. And it's startling. Like yelling or whatever the case may be, you know, just anything like door slamming, like somebody just like abruptly, you know, something happening. That makes so much sense. Yeah. So it's like something I'm having to like try to retrain my brain. Yeah. Which luckily Kenny's been really helping me with that, like telling me, reminding me I'm safe and yeah. stuff, you know, I'm like, uh, you know, nothing, like he's not going to let anything happen to me or, you yeah. know, it's like comforting. But yeah, it's just crazy how you have to like unwind like weird shit that somehow just like got programmed in yeah. you to be like hypersensitive about, you know, like, I don't oh. know, it's like all that whole like PTSD stuff. Oh, baby <laughs> Megan. Well, I mean, yeah, I, it. I would never want to put any child through that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, um, do you want me to, uh, I don't know, kind of brighten the mood, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah, Slightly. Of I'm ready to tell you my fucking costume <gasps> story. Oh, yeah. Yes. What were we talking about earlier? Disneyland? Or, well, just Disney anything. Disney World. Disney yeah. World. Oh, I've still never been there. Oh, well, it's like... Four different Disneyland's that are all have different like themes. Oh, one weird. of them, one of them, like Magic Kingdom, uh huh, is its own theme park, and that's like Disneyland. Yeah, it's like going to Disneyland, basically. You know, a little different, but right. same kind of setup. And then um, I don't remember what it's called now, but it used to be called MGM like Studios. Studios or, no, Ep- is like um, it's yeah. all like movie themed, and it's all like um, oh, but there's a bunch of more intense rides there and stuff. Mm-hmm. Big roller coasters and the um, Tower of Terror, and, like all that Whoa. stuff is there. And then um, the Animal Kingdom, which is you know, animal animals. Yeah, like uh, free range, like just free range. Again there's like, uh, like real animals. There's a safa- yeah, there's oh, like whoa. a safari that yeah. you can go on where you ride around and it's just acres and acres and acres and acres of like whoa fake like savanna land, but just like yeah. African animals just like roaming and <gasps> hanging out and like sleeping on rocks and why did I not know this? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, and then uh, but Animal Kingdom's so cool too because uh, there's also just parts that you can walk through that look like you're in the middle of India or oh, you're in whoa. the middle of, you uh-huh. know, Thailand or, uh, yeah, so Africa. Cool. And it's yeah. really cool. Um, oh, my gosh. We should go. Okay. Animal. And then Epcot. And Epcot's yeah. the one with the big okay. ball. Yes. And that one's all, like. Yeah, I've seen that. Science themed and stuff like that. Whoa. And, like, space and <gasps> dinosaurs and. Uh, it's really, it's that really awesome. Amazing. Um, and at Epcot, there's also mm-hmm. a walk around the world where Ooh. you can walk, you walk along this path uh-huh. around this gigantic, like beautiful lake that has all these boats in it and stuff. Right. And you walk along this path and you go through like France mm-hmm. and like Spain Ooh. and uh, I could be wrong about the countries. I don't remember exactly. Germany, I think, or it's just like Bavaria and like yeah. Mexico and um, oh. you just walk through and it changes and there's like restaurants and there's rides and mm-hmm. there's shops and there's everything in, in all the different countries. Whoa. Um, it's really awesome. Yeah. But at Epcot... There's this fucking ride Uh where you, like, blast off into space. Whoa. Oh, that would probably freak me out. Oh, my God. Megan, (laughs) I almost fucking died in there. I was (laughs) panicking so hard, like, in my body. Yeah. So, I, like, you get in there. For one, it's, like, one single line bench of, like, 
five or six seats uh. and you sit in there and then they close the doors on either side oh, of you God, no way. and then they close this <gasps> screen no. that tilts forward so uh. that the screen is like right by your face and uh. your knees are like touching a thing and I'm not tall yeah. okay you're like in there and there's people on either side and the doors are closed. That's how it starts, okay? God, no way. That's like my worst nightmare. I'm, my heart is beating so hard just <laughs> thinking about it's it. It's making my heart beat hard. Awful. And I, have not, I have never even done it. But then the you idea. like, quote unquote, like blast off mm -hmm. into space where space. they push, <laughs> they like push the like G, the pressure. Yeah. They like make you experience the like G forces or whatever. Oh, so it's like all this horrible like pressure and it you can feel no. it like deep in your body Ugh. and you I feel like you're deep in my body pushed into <laughs> where you already feel smashed <laughs> you're being pushed into it forever and then you'd like do some shit in space or whatever i don't know i was just i was just I was just breathing oh, very God. carefully and I was focusing <sighs> so hard on just not, I was like, it's going to be over soon. It's going to be over soon. Breathe. It's going to be over soon. Okay. In there, no, out through your mouth. It's going to be over soon. It's going to be over soon. Yeah. And then whenever it was over, I like opened the door, got the fuck out of there. And as we're exiting this thing, <laughs> yeah. Patrick lets out this horrible fart, like oh, horrible, no. eggy, <laughs> Terrible. Oh my god, no. Rotten ass fart right in that tiny little <laughs> oh, No. That's so horrible. And then the next people just went right Ew. in there and closed the door. Oh, that's <laughs> so mean. I can't imagine. Like that was so that was so stressful already. <laughs> yeah. I can't fucking imagine oh, no. with that added on top oh, of god. it. Those how people terrible. are probably talking about that right now. Ugh. Remembering how horrible that experience was. Fuck. That sounds awful. I hate shit like that. Ugh, it was it was bad. But um the uh the costume thing was when I went with my family in I was probably 12, 11 or 12, okay? Yeah. The costumes just creeped me out, like yeah. you said. It just I didn't I was like hearing a lot, you know, reading a lot, um watching a lot whatever about like John Wayne Gacy and stuff at the time oh, I was just thinking yeah. about like creepy people yeah. being in costumes just to get close to children yeah and it really freaked me out yeah like it it like consumed my little baby brain and um I just didn't want anything to do with them while we were on that vacation I didn't want and I kind of like yeah. made that clear to my family yeah. which was a mistake number one. Oh yeah because yes. my uncle Dave was there mm -hmm. and uncle Dave is an asshole who right. will you know, push whatever buttons he can. So, um, we go to lunch with my family, which is, it's my mom, my dad, me, my brother, mm -hmm. my aunt Becky and my uncle Dave. Mm -hmm. And the place where we go to lunch is like this weird little cafe that's in Disney world somewhere. I don't know which park we were at, but it had a bunch of characters like in it. Mm. That was like the gimmick. You know, that you can oh, eat no. and have all the characters in there with uh, you, which is great if you're like a little kid, but I was just super, they just made me so uncomfortable. I don't know. Yeah. So my uncle Dave, in seeing my reaction of one of them walk by me, mm -hmm. seeing me cringe and like kind of creep down into my chair a little bit, he was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is going to be funny. Oh no. He what goes, jerk. Yeah. <laughs> He goes and tells them that it's my birthday <gasps> and that I would want, I, that it would make me so happy if all of them that's would so sing, up. sing to me. Oh no. That's, that's like, that's some, like mean he said, spirited shit. Not only th that I wanted them to sing to me, but that I really wanted hugs from all of them. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> Yeah, oh, fuck. that's so horrible. Which, like nowadays, yeah. yeah, maybe somebody would have been like, "Hey, don't do that without her consent." But you know, this is like mm -hmm. the '90s. They were like, right. "Do whatever the fuck you want," you know. Right. It'll be funny. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, they they uh, sing "Happy Birthday" to me, and I'm just like frozen. And I could feel my whole body like turning red. You know, uh, like I do. Yeah. Like. <laughs> How I become a tomato. Yeah. I could feel that happening and I was just like shaking with like just wanting to run mm -hmm. away. 
Yeah. And I couldn't. I was surrounded uh, by I was surrounded by them. They like so pulled my up. chair out and mm-hmm. were like singing happy birthday to me. I who I don't like attention anyway. Right. Ever. Yeah. I don't want any attention. I've always been like that. So I not only had the attention of like all of these fucking people in the Disney costumes, but then everybody else in the restaurant too is all turning and you know singing mm-hmm. and looking. So I'm uh, very stuck. <sighs> and just like my like first little baby like experiences with panic, you know, yeah. where that feeling of like I need to get the fuck out of here and I can't. But yeah, as soon as they were done, he like Uncle Dave starts laughing about it and stuff, and I was like, ha ha ha, yeah, that's like super funny. Yeah, like the whole rest of that trip, I was just like super, <laughs> just like extra anxious. I was yeah. like. Thanks. Now I have a lifelong fear of uh-huh. like the people well, in costumes. If if I go there with you, um, and your family and um, Uncle Dave is there, I um, and he you won't guys be. Are Antic, I'll kick his ass. No. Okay. Well, that's good. I don't hang out with. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uncle Dave's fine. He just he was just. All of my uncles were like that. They're just. You know, I guess that's like maybe that, part of the being an uncle role yeah. or something. You just like it's, fu- you, you know, it's not your own kid, so you can like kind of fuck with them, right? And they were, you know, <laughs> whatever country people that grew yeah. up in the generation of like, oh, you want to learn how to swim? Mm-hmm. The, the, actually, Uncle Dave is the one that did that to me. Oh, gosh. he threw yeah. me in the pool and like, yeah. like learn how to swim, go do it, you know. Um, but yeah, my my uncle Todd was the same way. I remember him driving a speedboat and us being on like um inner tubes Mm -hmm. and it being my very first time and I was like a little tiny child and I was like hey I'm gonna hold on as tight as I can can you please just go slow you know right oh yeah honey don't worry don't Mm -hmm. you worry sweetheart I'll go slow yeah I'll go slow I get on there what does he do Mm -hmm. whip me off as Mm -hmm. fast as he can as high as he can get me like flying in the air oh, gosh, into yeah. the dark lake by myself sitting there not knowing what to do or if anybody's going to come back and get me yeah <laughs> jeez no i get it though cuz like, that that actually reminds me of like the cuz i was like so so scared of um like bodies of water especially ones i couldn't mm. see through like mm-hmm. um not knowing like what was underneath i still kind of get a little bit creeped out but i've like definitely tried mm. to like get past that fear cuz i like I love swimming and being in water too, but, um, yeah, but it, you know, back in the day, like that was like something I was just totally terrified of. And I had a boyfriend at the time who had like, um, like a jet ski Mm -hmm. and I really wanted to go out on the jet ski, but I like made him like, just like promise me like that, that I like, that was like something I was really terrified of. And I knew that like people will will, like throw people off intentionally. Um, and so I was like, just like begging him, like not to do that. And then what does he do? And then he goes like super fast, yeah, super fast. And then he does this move where there's like a sheer rock, like cliff, you know, like it's like a rock, a rock wall or whatever yeah. on the side of the lake. So this is like, um, I think Apache Lake in Arizona. He just starts like going as fast as he can, like towards that what's like looks like a rock wall and then at the very last moment he just cranks it to the right and i go like fall like flying off. i was already <sighs> freaked out that i he like i thought he was seriously gonna ram us into that and kill us because he he'd kind of he was kind of like a wild guy yeah he was like very um into like extreme anything like he would do stupid stuff Ride a skateboard off the roof, hit a trampoline below, and then bounce off, and oh, then yeah. like break all kinds of bones in his body. Mm-hmm. He was always like doing like crazy stuff. Like he would like drive down the highway, like going. He had a he had a bitchin' yellow t top Camaro. Like it was like oh, a nineteen eighty three. Ooh, and he'd take the t tops off, and he like try to drive on the highway with his feet like up <laughs> out of the t top, uh-huh. and he would just do like extreme things. Um, but one time he T-tops decided, are so hot. <laughs> yeah, he we took um our Chevy Cordoba Mm. that he had sold or traded a television for. We are out in the desert. He, there's this old telephone pole. He decides with me in the car that he's going to start ramming (gasps) the Chevy Cordoba over and over again. He like would ram into it and then throw it in reverse and then back up. Into the telephone pole? Into the telephone pole. 
and I got down on the floorboard and I was just like in like a fetal position, like freaking out because he's just oh backing my up. God. And then ramming it and then backing up and then ramming it. It was like Why? really insane. Yeah. The neighbors called the police. Like his brother came over and almost like got in a physical fight with him because he was so pissed off oh my God. that he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Now we're going to have the toes piece of shit car like out you like the neighbors are calling the police like what are you doing and then he's like trying to get in a fight with him and it was really insane but he would do stuff like that and you liked him yeah because he was like this wild skateboarder guy that was just like crazy and he was super 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 like mega genius like he actually graduated high school early and like went to like a like not mit but something like really he was, like, this crazy genius guy. Wow. And he, like, when he got a job, like, in high school, like, he was building airplane parts for, like, Boeing and stuff. Like, oh, God. Yeah. So he, but he just was one of those people that is, like, so, like, genius that that makes him, like, crazy. They're bored. Yeah. Yeah. He was always bored. Always doing something crazy. I wonder if he's a serial killer He was killer fun, now. though. No, he was just, you know, he was actually really sweet. And he. Good. He was just, like, had a lot of energy. Yeah. And so I thought that was fun. Like, to me, it was, like, you know, never a dull moment. Like, he was always just doing something crazy. It was, like, very entertaining and fun. Um, Jesus. But he was, like, I remember his his brother and, like, our friends, like, bullied us when we were dating in high school for me to give him a blowjob. And I really didn't want to. And he really didn't want me to either. Like, we weren't at that part of our relationship. Right. And they, like, forced us to go, me, to give him a blowjob in this truck for some reason. <laughs> and Wait, you didn't do it, did you? I did, but what? he wouldn't have, he didn't have, like, a heart on, and I didn't know what I was doing. So it was just, like, this, like, like, I was, like, I thought I was, like, really supposed to be, like, sucking hard. <laughs> like, oh. I, like, didn't know what, you know, like, and it was just really awful. Like, it was oh, really no. awful. Neither one of us wanted, he's just, like, sitting there, like, tense, like, <laughs> And then, like, we had to come out and tell them that we did it for whatever reason. I don't know why they were oh, so insistent no. on the blowjob. But then he, like, How he wouldn't talk to me again. <laughs> um, he wouldn't talk to me. Like, we just didn't, like, we just, like, yeah. our relationship just ended because Because you were, so like, awful. forced to rape him, basically? Yeah. But then later we dated Yikes. again, like, when I was, I think, like, 18. Like, we got past that. Because I, mm. I think we were, like, 15 or 16. <sighs> That's really traumatic. <laughs> well, it's like, I feel like all my stories are super, like, traumatic. But he was crazy then. Like, one of my favorite memories with him was we, he had a Chevy Blazer. He had all kinds of cars because he could do all kinds of, like, mechanic works or Just whatever. that is hot on its own. Yeah. And he had all these, like, he had a boat. He had, like, the jet ski. So it was, like, always, you know, we were always doing something. Yeah. Um... And his family, like, loved being at the lakes. Like, that, they purposefully, like, lived there so that they would be close. Because they all, like, were into, like, you know, boating and, like, high-speed sports. Water guess, sports. You know, water sports. Water jet, like, water skiing, which yeah. always freaked me out, too. But anyway, he and I were, like, driving from Tucson to where he lived outside of Phoenix. And we didn't have any air conditioning in the car. Ugh. It was a Chevy Blazer. And it was just, like, had those, like, puffy seats. Mm -hmm. So it's just, those seats were just already, the like, vinyl. Those, well, no, these were, like, velvety, almost. Like, they were, like, like, that weird, almost, like, um, it's not, like, like, microfiber faux, yeah. leather, like, um, faux suede, almost, like. Yeah. Yeah, know. but, it, and it, like, holds gross stains, like, if you spill something on it, it, like, makes a big ring. It's just gross. It's not a good material. Anyway, yeah. it was, like, had to have been, like, 120 degrees at least, and we're, like, trying to drive all the way from Tucson. <laughs> Two, it was like an hour and 45 minute drive and so we kept turning the heat on and rolling up the windows and making it even more hot so that when we would roll down the windows like it would feel cool <laughs> <laughs> and it was so ridiculous and I think it kept overheating like it was having all kinds of problems and we were it, that's it was probably why like the, the heat was on too yeah we we're just just miserable and sweating <sighs> profusely and it's just a shitty drive and you can see this like weird like haze that comes up from like the asphalt being so hot. Oh yeah. It is really hot enough to fry an egg like on your yeah. dashboard. But we're, so we're driving and then we get over by like the Florence cause we went this, we went the back way to Phoenix through Florence and there's the prison there. And alongside of the prison is this huge, like reclaimed waterway. Like mm -hmm. it's like 
um, like an aqueduct kind of thing. Like, like a reservoir? A reservoir, and it's like fenced off. Uh-huh, like a chain yeah. link faint fence. We got there. We climbed the fence, and we jumped into that water. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so we could cool off. We were oh, so yeah. hot. Yeah. We were so hot. But the thing about those is they're formed like a, like a V. So, so like... we couldn't get out. We couldn't get out. Oh. It started to get really super scary because I just like try to climb out and then like start sliding back oh, down. No. Yeah. And you're like grasping for like nothing. There's nothing to grasp onto because it's like concrete. Just like, you know, um, like smooth. sheer smooth. Yeah. So there's no like you can't. So you're like kind of trying to like jump like hoist your body oh my but God. you're sliding back down you're like losing all of your energy and uh it got scary for a minute i thought we were gonna die there um, oh my god and like how do you explain that to your family like oh they just decided <laughs> to go for a dip you know and, like i don't know but we didn't die we got out but then we got bad rashes all over our oh, body no. <laughs> like from whatever was in that water Ugh. And we were just like itched for like so long and we finally made it and we were like soaking wet. Our clothes were soaking wet. Everything was hot, like steam. I feel like it was just coming off our bodies. It was just, oh, oh. but it was kind of a fun memory. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was so stupid. I can't believe we did that. It was just, yeah, always doing crazy stuff with him. But that was back in the day um, when I would like the wild, <laughs> the, the wild guy. Mm-hmm. They're just like funny and crazy and I don't know, some lunatic. But luckily, like Kenny's kind of <laughs> kind of in his own way, a little wild and crazy, but he's like, I'm, oh, I'm glad I met him when I did. Yeah. You know, he's an adult version yeah. of wild and crazy. Like he still has some wild and crazy about like, I can get him to go at midnight to like sit down at the dock with me, yeah. you know, like do, you know, it's not totally like boring or anything, but not like. Let's go break into a junkyard and steal car parts. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, in the middle of the night. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey, Megan. Yeah, what's up, Cherish? Oh, hey, have you heard about Anchor by Spotify? No. Well, geez, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Uh, l- let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Whoa, it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. What? Yeah. When hosting on Anchor, you can also distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. Wow. You should download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Sweet. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Ring, ring. Hello? Cherish, you're not going to believe this. <gasps> what? You know how I normally struggle with the D? Yeah. Diarrhea. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you're not, you're not going to believe this. Uh, today, I strangely had a very rare occurrence of something known as the C. Constipation. Oh, no. (laughs) Have you ever heard about colon broom? Colon broom? No. It cleanses your colon and helps create regular bowel movements, improving digestion and your gut health. Holy mackerel. Does it help your weight goals become easy to reach? And is it keto and fasting friendly? Yes, it is. Whoa. And if you use promo code WORSTDAY10, you can get $10 off and free shipping. No way. Way. Whoa. You should probably get yourself some colon broom and fix that C problem you've got. I agree. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Bye-bye. I do feel like, I do feel like I'm probably a, I'm probably better off being on medication. Mm Mm-hmm. Because, like, I feel like I'm, like, less reactive. Yeah. Or, like paranoid or yeah you know i don't know like good. thinking the so world's out better. to get me yeah i'm feeling a lot better it's crazy it's like night and day oh good yeah 
I love that feeling when you get like medicated the proper way and mm-hmm. you get that sensation of like, oh, this is how normal people feel. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You know? Like I feel calm. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. Like I'm not in that like flight, fight, freeze yeah. mode, all or fawn, I guess whatever, all the time. Yeah. Like, I feel like I was always like just I don't know, like just so uncomfortable. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Like on like on high edge. alert. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't know, but it's definitely I've noticed a difference and I'm like actually just doing stuff yeah. that I wasn't doing before. Like I've been doing crafts, like I was like painting stuff. Yeah. I've been like making like weird shit to sell the thrifty. Like yeah. I I don't know, like I hadn't done any like I haven't pulled out my paint for so long. And yeah. like now I'm actually like excited about it. So that's better. That's an improvement, I guess. God, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I um since I stopped breastfeeding finally, I'm like slowly getting back on my ADD meds. Oh wow, well, yeah. And that's... I can just like slowly feel mm-hmm. that fog like just lifting yeah. to where I'm able to like complete a task mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of just leaving in the middle of it and yeah forgetting about it forever and coming back and be like god damn it yeah um i still have uh, a ways to go in like becoming like properly medicated again right but um but well, i can still feel doing, yeah yeah I the can right just, way yeah and i can feel it just like helping mm-hmm. you know just yeah. that little bit it's like oh my god yes i can tell like you know like you seem more you seem less of a fog or like stuck on a sentence for mm-hmm. a really long time, yeah. you know. Like you seem. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like wh- what? Well, like, no, but when huh? you'll, you'll be like talking about yeah. something, and then you'll get like deep into thought, and you'll pause go, for a moment. Give me like, a minute. You have to remember, yeah. Like, what? Yeah. But you're you're not you're doing less of that, yes. or if none at all. Yes. So you seem because more, yeah. I'm getting back on my meds. So crazy, Get like my brain straight. It feels so much better. God. Yeah. Well, I was so like anti taking medication for so long. Were you? I just didn't like. There was a point when I felt like I was like way over medicated, and then I just like turned into this like weird like zombie person. I was yeah. Having really weird dreams. That's the one thing that I think is really strange. Is Um, my doctor prescribed me a medication and I'd taken it before because I struggle with like night, constant nightmares. Oh my gosh. I'll like often have dreams about, of course, like bridges and like something crazy happening. And then, but there's these one that's like, um, reoccurring place, but like the scenarios are always different. Like same place, but like the situations are different. But there's always like some kind of just like a fear feeling. Yeah. Like I know something bad, like an impending doom, like something bad is gonna happen. And on one one of the dreams that I had of that particular location was like um, there was somebody like trying to kill me, like they were after me, and I was like, it was like this big outdoor horse like stable, kind of like more like a ranch, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I'm like running from this person is trying to kill me like I'm like trying to hide behind but there's nowhere to hide like it's just like kind of ranch like there's no like you can't hide like hide a tree yeah <laughs> I'm like trying to hide field. yeah I'm trying to hide behind like the corral posts and the out there and like there's no and they're like coming it's just like and then I like wake up and it's crazy Oof. anyway but the thing of it is is that I have I've had this problem for a long time and um he And another doctor prescribed me this particular medication that's for nightmares specifically. Like, it's supposed to make you not have nightmares. Whoa. But the crazy thing about it, it makes me have worse, like, worse nightmares. Whoa. Yeah, like, way worse. Totally a side effect. Yeah. So I was like, what the hell? I have to talk to... I mean, I'm going to tell about... Yeah. Because I haven't been taking it because it, like, makes things... I told Kenny, I was like, I think this is actually making things a lot worse. Like, my dreams are even more fucked up than they were before. You know... The only time I have dreams, at least ones that I can remember at all, Mm -hmm. is when I'm pregnant. Huh. Weird. Mm Mm-hmm. I remember having really vivid dreams dreams. when I was pregnant, too. But, I mean, I just always kind of have. It's just most of the time I don't remember them. But there's ones that are just so fucked up, like a weird 
like totally demented and I wake up in this like weird feeling that I like carry with me usually through the day because I'll just like have like weird flashbacks of the dream and it's just like keeps coming up in my mind and I'm like what it's just so strange yeah if I do have dreams they're just complete nonsense yeah I'm here in this room and these that person's here, but that's not actually what that person looks like. Oh, okay, now we're over here at this place, and mm -hmm. now we're buying food, and now we're driving, and it, yeah. it makes no sense. Oh. Wow. Like, it's, I don't, um, my brain's broken, I think. Yeah. The one person that I've ever thought, like, I really enjoy listening to them talk about the dreams that they have, who have really, really, really cool-sounding dreams, like, also very interesting is H <laughs> mm. really like because when we lived together like she would tell me about her dreams that she would have and they were like the I was like holy shit like you I don't know they're just, just elaborate very, yeah very elaborate like and, that yeah and like just also very like smart you know like an intelligent like intelligent She's dreams not only intelligent but also like artistic mm -hmm. so it would make sense that she would have really yeah intense beautiful crazy dreams <laughs> yeah yeah but they were fun to listen to her tell the dreams Cause sometimes somebody tells you about a dream you're just like ugh <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah so cool like my coworker got really into a dream that he had and he's like oh and then there's this guy and he like you know he kind of looked like john he just like would it was going off and mm -hmm. on and on and on about he's getting so excited his body was like getting like, like uh -huh. gyrating around. i'm like oh my god is this dream ever gonna end it's like a three hour long dream i'm like yeah cool you were in that apartment yeah you guys were smoking pot cool like this is your dream i'm like i don't want to care <laughs> <laughs> Quit telling me about your dream. I don't care. <laughs> Fuck your dreams. Yeah. I mean, he's a really nice guy. He's, he's funny and great, but I just really did not want to hear about his dream anymore. I was like, I wanted to do, like, text message Kenny or something. I was just like, I don't care about your dream. Quit telling me about it. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's how I wonder if people feel sometimes when they're listening to this. Well, we already said if they don't want to listen to it, they don't have to listen to it. That's true. No one's making them. I'll turn it off. They're not required. We're not required. We're not <gasps> holding a gun to anyone's head to listen to us if they don't want to. They don't have to. You said that you had another <coughs> story about that crazy boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if I told or if told this already, but so, yeah, so everything got really crazy also around the time I got, was like really bummed out that um, the, after the blowjob incident that um like we were basically no longer boyfriend and girlfriend and um like just things got weird in my life like with my family and stuff and so and he moved to phoenix but his family his parents were these hardcore like hippie survivalists like to the extreme um and built this crazy house fortress type thing like out in the middle of the desert with giant like cinder block, like huge, heavy. And his mom at the time, I think she was pregnant and she had a, a baby like strapped to her. Nice. And it was just like, you know, lifting. She was hardcore. She was like super fit, hardcore survivalist lady. Um, That's rad. And she knew how to do all these survivalist stuff, you know, like she, and she knew how to do all kinds of things. She was like, and she's also an artist and she like knew how to sew. She like make her own pasta. She was very hardcore. Um, but they're very interesting, um, and like very like German mm -hmm. and the dad's name was Adelric, Oh, but my That's boyfriend's German. name was like Aryan. <laughs> um, so the word Aryan. Yeah. Oh, um, it was okay. very interesting. And they're all German. Uh huh. Okay. So, and they build this huge house and it was amazing. Like it was like two story. They'd gotten lumber from this church, this, like, really old church, like, beams, like, huge wood, beautiful wood beams. <sighs> yes. And it was just really looked cool. Ugh. Um, I mean, it looked like, it was definitely, like, kind of like a survivalist house, but it looked... Like a like homestead, they, but, yeah, like, a... done well. And yes. they knew how to do everything, like, and so, and they built, like, this crazy vault, like, safe room that they filled with, like, you know, enough stuff to survive, like, something... So awesome. And they like, yeah, they had all these tons and tons and tons of guns that they had buried all over the property. Oh, just like very, yeah, in the middle of the desert. So, anyway, 
they were very interesting. Yeah. I they would, would watch their reality show. Yeah. They would spend a lot of time going to Phoenix, his parents, and they would leave my my boyfriend and his brother when we were in high school alone to just take care of the house. Right. So we, of course, had crazy parties. Yeah. And they had a six-foot bong that, like, went from the upstairs <laughs> down. Whoa. Because the, the upstairs was, like, open, and it went down to the fireplace. Like and a so, loft? Yeah. Wow. And so, in this huge, beautiful fireplace with these huge fires that we would have in there, like, that fireplace was, like, massive. So, we could just, like, burn all kinds of wood. It's so cool. It's crazy. But, yeah, we'd have these wild parties out there. And he got accepted to the school and, like, left high school. So, I didn't see him again until we were much older. I'm trying to think of how old I was because Savannah was, like, three. So, I had her when I was, like, 17. 20? Like, yeah, around that time. Anyway, so so I so we reacquainted like at a party. Like he came to Tucson for a party, and then we were just dating again. And then it was like I moved out there. Well, originally we were going to rent a house like in I don't know like somewhere in Phoenix, like Mesa or something, with his coworker who was another like crazy, super intelligent guy that he worked with. This he was like Rain Man. You yeah. could like give him. Like, you you would you could ask him about like a car model. He could tell you like all like the the weird specs. Yeah. He's like one of those people you like throw like a like a mathematical equation at. They can like say in an instant yeah. like kind of person. He was really in- interesting too. Yeah. But we got a like a house. I got a, we moved into a house together for like a moment, and it was like the uh, something happened. Like we violated the terms of the lease because I think we had a dog or something. Mm. And they, like, wanted us to I don't, buck out. Yeah, we didn't want to get rid of the dog. So we moved in with his parents. Um, and I never, like, really spent too much time with them at this point. Because they were, whenever I was out at their house, it was always because they were gone. So, so these are the badass yeah. hippie homesteaders? Yeah. Okay. So, and I didn't realize this, but his mom is, like, a total nudist. Oh, so, <laughs> hi. The first night there, I like go out into the kitchen to like get a glass of oh. water or something, and she's standing there and like totally naked and wanting to have this like conversation with me. And I'm Let's just hang m- out. meeting this woman. Sit down. Yeah. And when we went there, take I took your clothes off, get comfortable. Yeah. It was so weird. And then I was like, I volunteered to sleep on the couch just like out of respect for them because, you know, we were like in their home or whatever. And they're like, oh, we know you're already having sex. Of course, you guys can sleep in the same bed together and like all this stuff. And it was like Valentine's Day. She like took me to get like lingerie to wear. I was just very bizarre. But yeah, she was and she was always taking like being naked in the hot tub and like wanting me to be like telling me it was okay to be naked in the hot tub with her too. And I'm like... Vagina soup. <laughs> yeah. And she wasn't like being creepy about it, but she was just so open about she her didn't body. understand that yes. it was kind right. of creepy. Right. But I'm always just, I've always just been like super modest anyway. Like I like Me too. wearing yeah. like a shirt and a, oh, I don't like being in a bathing suit. No. Like just walking just around. Cover me up. Yeah. I I'm want good. something covering me in a bathing suit. Yeah. Same. Yeah. And I have to like slip into water. Like, very awkward looking. <laughs> like, Slowly. I don't want anyone to see me in a bathing suit for any length of time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, got gotcha. you. Okay. Like, I make sure the towel is, like, really close to the edge so that I can just, like, quickly, like, put a towel on. Because I do not like being just, like, wandering around bathing suits. But sometimes it's, like, ridiculous when you're, like, wearing, like, everybody else is wearing a bathing suit. And you're the only person wearing, like, <laughs> a shirt and, like, baggy shorts that are, like, coming down below your knees or something. Just, like, overdressed. Remind vacation. me to send you... <laughs> I bought the most unflattering bathing suit ever. You did? Yeah. Like when we were in Seattle <laughs> yeah. for at the hospital, mm-hmm. uh, our hotel had a a pool, so we thought we were going to use it, but none of us had bathing yeah. suits. We're like, let's just go to Target. We'll grab some little, you know, whatever suits. Uh-huh. We thought this one was really cute. It's like mm-hmm. black and like dips way deep down low oh, in the front, but it's like a one piece, but it's got like the frilly stuff uh-huh. around the edge. Oh, cute. But the way it's cut, it sits, it, like, pancakes your boobs super hard and then just, like, displays the pancakeness in the space 
but and with like every little roll in your gut in the cutout part, it's all just oh, sitting no. right there on display. It's so gross. Okay, sorry. Continue your story about this guy. It's okay, it's so funny though. No, but um, it was just oh, and then like they were they would not go to the doctor for like anything. They wanted to do everything like take care of it themselves. Like if they got injured at home or sick, it was like not so his dad while I was living there got this really bad abscess in his tooth Ooh. and like his face swelled up like crazy he was getting sick he was having fevers I was like Ooh. hey like this is really dangerous yeah. like you know you don't want to mess with that like go to the dentist he was like not go to the dentist Ugh. he was adamant about it. he made my boyfriend and I go to the livestock feed store and get like a hypodermic needle and like syringe oh. or whatever. And then we come back with it and he takes it and he, he like stabs the abscess and pus just like shoots across uh. the room. And then you can see like a lot of this like pressure coming down, but it's just like squirt. It was so gross. It was so gross. I don't like pus, Megan. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I was just like, this man, and he got really sick after that too, and he still was like refusing to go to the dentist. I think he yeah. pulled his tooth out like himself kind of thing. I'm sure he did, but that infection probably I know. spread into his bloodstream. It was insane. I was like, mm. what is going on? <laughs> like, it sounds like a fun place to live. It sounds kooky. <laughs> it was really kooky. But I learned a lot of stuff there. Like, um, yeah. Like his his mom was like a really good teacher of like okay. things, you know. Yeah. So it was cool to like learn how to like cook certain things like lasagna. You know, she made out of like her fresh pasta and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know. It was it was a very entertaining and very um, educational period of my life. Yeah. But yeah, it was just like. Um, Oh, and that was, that was the thing that I, um, what was it? Like for some reason, I think I moved back to Tucson. I like just, I feel, I forget what was going on, but I just couldn't really like, I think my family was like upset that like they weren't seeing Savannah, you know, it was just like very difficult to be living out there and like yeah. also like having to meet Nathan like halfway. How far is Tucson from Phoenix? Like about an hour and 45 minutes. It's like. Oh, okay. Depending on how far you're going, though, into, like, at least yeah. where I was going. Far enough to be plenty inconvenient. Yeah, for sure. So, but, uh, I found out that he was, like, um, I don't know if he was, like, necessarily, like, cheating on me, but he was, like, um, having conversations with the neighbor that lived, um, and nearby, <laughs> the, on a hill, and, um, so... I was like, well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, I'm not, like, you know. Letting him have conversations. Well, just, he was like, uh, I don't think they were just like, they're just going, like, kind of like dating. It felt like they were like dating, okay. you know, kind of thing. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to be in, like, still in this relationship with you. Yeah. Like, while you're hanging out with the neighbor lady. Mm -hmm. But he ended up, like, marrying her. Oh. And they have, like, something insane, like, eight kids or something <gasps> they're they have like tons and tons and tons of kids Whoa. i think they got a divorce which i don't even know how you would deal with a divorce oh. with like eight kids whoa but yeah um how do you transport eight how do you feed eight kids no oh, well i'm sure he made good money but but like how do you uh, like a giant van yeah like i mean you have to have like a giant van <laughs> Yikes, dude. But, yeah, that was interesting. I was like, whoa. I would not have wanted to have eight kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because there's this point where, you know, like, you know, we, we like, you know, like, thought, like, talked about, like, marriage and that kind of thing. Right. At that time, we were really, really young. But it was like, I'm glad that I didn't, I, if he, if, I don't know if that's what he wanted or what yeah, she wanted. But if he had wanted that, I don't, I would not have wanted to knock out. Um, that's too many for me, personally. I'm okay for anybody else yeah but i cannot manage eight i can't like hard I'd, to manage one for I'd me rip my hair out yeah of my head <laughs> with eight children i mean i'm sure it's all like if you're really the kind of mom that can raise eight kids and be good oh, at for it for sure you know? there are people yeah and that I are made for that really, i think she's one of those people i'm not 
but I just I couldn't do I couldn't have not done that. Mm -mm. Um, um, anyhow, but I, that was so crazy. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Just the whole that whole time of my life was just really crazy. Was that the only thing you wanted to share about that guy? Yeah, I there I feel like there is something else, but I can't. I now I'm not. It's like totally flew, flew out of my cuckoo's nest of my mind. Um, um, I appreciate you helping me take my pants off <laughs> so that I could pee yeah, yeah. while my nails were wet. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> you're a good, you're a good friend. Yeah. You're no, you're welcome. I was, I was happy to help. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Well, let's wrap this bitch up. Wrapping it up. I don't know what we talked about. <laughs> I <laughs> feel like we've like rambled on about all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, but that's okay. That's we good. do that sometimes. Okay. Well, but um, thanks for listening. If if you did, and you can find us on all the social media. You know all the places probably by now. I don't think I need to keep saying it. <laughs> do I? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. All right, but um, just uh, remember that it could always be worse. And we will see you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Bye. Bye.